Oh my heavens, how beautiful is that? Simply stunning. That's the southernmost tip of the mainland. Oh, yeah. Which one? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. A replica of the first boat that landed here in Albany uh, way back in the day even before Perth was started so it was a few convicts and some military and uh, they started the colony here pretty amazing So we've been out seal hunting and whale hunting. We saw a couple of seals having a nice little sunbake. Um, whales are far, a few and far between. What say you, Captain? No whale of a tail here. No whale tails. No whale tails, and uh, we live to see another whale on another day. Yeah, I'd say we've got another cruise in us. Yeah. <laughs> That's 50 metres high. You just can't tell. It's a long way away. Don't. And uh, it's it, absolutely massive. It's massive. not. It's not actually. <laughs> it's pretty small. But half the stuff we've taken photo has been absolutely massive, and it doesn't look very big at all. So can I just say it the other way around? It's really massive. I tell you what, I see coming down there on a slide. Boom into the ocean. Known for its uh, biodiversity up here. It's one of the biodiversity hotspots for wildflowers. It can, contains about 87 varieties of wildflower that don't exist anywhere else in the entire world. I'm not too sure why that is, but uh, one of the guys here was saying the soil is so poor that it doesn't give one flower a chance over another flower to, um, to dominate. So everyone's scratching for survival and they all manage to pop up something together and no one gets a chance to dominate. Nice theory. But anyway, it's funny, it's out here uh, about 120 kilometers north of Albany and not too many people probably see it. But I'm thinking, you know what, God does. He probably looked down on his creation and see his little biodiversity hotspots and said, yeah, I like that.
We're in Stirling National Park and I finally found a brush. So I get to brush my hair. It's got bird's nest in it. And this Stirling National Park is, dare I say, I'm not gonna rename it. It's living up to its name. It is in fact Stirling. Thank you. Check it out. The numbers are stacking up, we've got about 420 kilometres to do and uh, we left at around 9.30. It's always a challenge when you've got big distance to do and you don't want to get there late. We just happen to be in Lucky Bay. Getting lucky with that colour feast of our eyes. It's an amazing turquoise, very light turquoise, we've never seen this before. Apparently caused by the beautiful white sand, known to be the whitest sand in Australia. So we're just going to go down and check that out. above Esperance and it's absolutely beautiful. Here you can see Frenchman's Peak. <laughs> Kalgoorlie, which is about uh, 400 kilometres from the bottom of Australia, going straight up from Esperance. And uh, this is the super pit, a gold mine. There's gold in them there pits. It's not a uh, little pit. In fact, it's probably one of the biggest gold mine pits in the world. It started off as a couple of Irish lads about 120 years ago, found some gold out here and they nicknamed it the Golden Mile and then there it was on for young and old and it was a real battle. Lots and lots of people battling over their pit and their claim. Well, along comes Alan Bond in 1980-ish and he thinks what an opportunity, uh, economy of scale, if I buy up all the leases and just start digging with some big stuff, we can cut the cost down and really get it going. And, and he was just a bit short himself of accruing all the lease, leases, but um, he did get achieved eventually. So they coalesced all the little pits and all the battling stopped because now it's just only one player. And this is what we ended up with. Um, the way they do it is fairly simple. They dig a bit, they shove in some explosive, they blow up a bit, and then they shovel a bit, and then they go and process it. Hey Dad. I dug a hole and it's filling with water.
lovely time talking on the way back from the, our dinner at the pub. We had a lovely time. Nick, uh, this guy, a couple of Aboriginal guys asked Nick for some money and he said, nah, but I'll have a chat with you. So we sat there on the pavement, had a lovely ch chat with these two guys. Turns out that they have a, uh, they had a faith and they still have a faith and they knew all about the Bible and in fact Craig was preaching and telling us the story of Thomas, uh, the doubting Thomas and the story of Judas and he'd been to a jail himself and uh, he was talking about the courthouse, we're sitting in front of the courthouse and he was talking to us about how God is the judge and Jesus is our lawyer and the acute <coughs> prosecutor is uh, the devil just accusing us all the time. Yeah, and anyway, he told us all these other stories. I said, mate, you are an amazing storyteller. You know, I just, I see you preaching. You're a preacher, mate. You need to get back into it. Get back on the horse. His father's a preacher and his stepmom's actually a pediatrician. Anyway. Long and short of it was that we we ended up praying for him and asking for the Holy Spirit to fill him up afresh because you obviously need the Holy Spirit to fight the demons that are surrounding us all and um, to give him power to overcome. Yeah, it's just a lesson for all of us. We ended up praying for him and praying in tongues for him and praying that God will fill them up and they receive that so anyway for what it was worth I felt blessed for it I think they were too this is Norseman it's the uh, crossroads here if you go north it's Kalgoorlie if you go south it's Esperance there's no heading directly east um, west sorry but east the way we're going now we're going to cross the Nullarbor Plain that everyone talks about and it's got apparently the longest straight road in the world somebody told us got to watch our speed because uh, we saw the policeman yesterday and they patrol this road fairly well especially at the start There's our beautiful steeds just taking us 623 k's today from uh, Kalgoorlie to Cocklebiddy across the Nullarbor. So um, we actually, if you look on the map of Australia, it's a fair chunk of Australia that we've ridden today. The wind is actually, the crosswind is quite strong and uh, you get off the bike and everyone says, how are you coping with that? Well, the wind was, I mean, I was coping with it. It was actually quite cold. I wasn't dressed for it. How was the riding um, today? I am amazed by the different conditions make. Like I was, you know, you think, oh, the Nullarbor, the Nullarbor. Maybe I had in my head it was going to be some desert plain and searing heat and animals at you. No, nah. so far it's just been flat, sort of scrubby vegetation to see. Um, no animals because they're all running from the wind they are not coming out with this sort of wind and the wind yeah when the winds at you behind you are just sitting back doing a certain speed and loving it and then as soon as the wind changes and shifts and comes at you from the side on you're at it all all yeah. day gusts coming going coming yeah. going and you're fighting it and um I just, I just, yeah, I mean, just someone blow a, a strong fan from behind me and I'm I'm going to have the best time ever on the Nullarbor. I think that the Nullarbor plane, even with the wind factor, is a lot easier to ride than up north, say the Barclay Highway, where you're, Berkeley, Barclay Highway, where you're doing um, the heat. And you've got long, straight, red, dusty plains, animals dead on the road and just searing heat and you're getting dry and you're getting hot. That's harder than the Nullarbor at this time of year. That's my gut feeling. Yeah, that's right. The gusts, it, you'd be all right. And then the gusts, the wind had come and it'd take, it'd take your helmet 
uh, and nearly flipping. I, I thought, I was worried I was going to bloody get gusted off the bike. That would have been a bit of a lark. Anyway, oh, and up, then <laughs> in one of the one of the legs on the the most this gustiest leg, I didn't have my chin strap done up. I can't believe I did that. I didn't even notice. I don't know why. That was a bit silly. You got to give it a bit of love. A bit of love. Doing well. Hasn't let me down. No. There's our digs, hey? It's uh, five star. Minus four. <laughs> five star minus four. <laughs> so this is the town we're in. Cocklebill. Cockle Biddy. It's a beautiful town. It's got a truck. I overtook that a couple of times actually, that truck. And there you go, there's the town. It's got a motel and a service station. And Nicholas reckons he's looking for a bloody eagle. He's got ADD now. He's well again and he's making me come out to look at this eagle i had it on excellent authority that you come to cockle biddy to catch up with the eagle he looked nothing more than hey we're eagle looking for the eagle <laughs> mate where's the eagle where's the eagle oh around the corner here oh Let's see <laughs> nick was going to tell me it was the budgies the guy says that nick no wonder you left your helmet on no, the eagle is in here, mate. It's a nice shower, no eagle. Look here. Looks like a shower to me. Oh, there you go. All in a cage, poor, bar poor <coughs> buggers. And we get to gawk at them. These are the wedge tail eagles. The large Australia's largest bird of prey has a wingspan of up to 2.7 meters. Well, good morning from Cucklebitty. This is the scene that's great. We've greeted. We're greeted to. People are moving already. It's about half past seven. Even the time zone change has changed here, but it hasn't even changed our iPhones. Get that people that's how far out back we are the iphone doesn't even register look at all these people have gone now that shocks me okay i woke up thinking we're in the amazing race we've got to get going again and look there's no one here we're last to leave So we've come from Cocklebitty and about oh, only about 250 k's, uh, three hours riding because we've been so slow with the kangaroos. Everyone's just can't believe it. And even we've just talked to this guy, he's done it quite often. He's never seen anything like it. The roos just won't get off the road. Obviously it's been really dry here. First bit of rain, it pulls on the road and that's where the kangaroos are just lapping it up. They're loving it. They actually don't look in very good condition at all poor little follows and uh, so I hope we, we uh, got some footage of that what are you guys doing mate get off the road all right come on there's no food here no food we had to slow down to 30 k's an hour on the bikes the cars didn't have to slow down as much because it doesn't really matter if they hit a roof that's okay but if we hit a roof we're it's all over Red Rover so you had to slow right down until you knew which way it was going and uh, yeah so that was and it's about 12 degrees i've got like now four layers of clothes on i can't believe how cold it is on the going along uh yeah so i've layered up uh four layers with down wind stoppers skivvies you name it i've got it on 
and it's still cold. Anyway, time to get something to eat and uh, another coffee. Hey, you've been going, love. Oh, we got some good footage too. Hopefully, of the of the semis go past. You know, and you know the semis go past, and there's a whole lot of wind that comes with it, and you don't really see that, uh, obviously, because the wind's invisible. But today, because of the water on the road, you get the you can see what the wind's doing. So we've got some footage of that too, so you can see the wind and the and the water just coming each time we overtake a truck this is what's happening so or they pass us this is what's happening all right well Skippy's got his Vegemite going and uh, it's time for my salad sandwich well then you've been back on your bike again yes you ended up in Albany and uh, it was a beautiful place mm. I think oh, we went chasing whales in Albany off the coast. Yeah, we spent some money there doing that. <laughs> so, did we get in a whale? No. Well, we got this free ticket to say at any time we go back to Albany, we get to do it for, again for free. It's not going to happen in a hurry, and that little ticket's gone. <laughs> you lost it. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Okay, so I really was desperate to get a nice shot of a whale up close and personal, maybe a big breach. Yeah. Because I had a story about Jonah. Mm. I we'll never got the same story about Jonah. Yeah, oh, sweetie. Do it now. Okay. Okay, so everyone knows about the story of Jonah. And he's this dude who's running away from God, but he's supposed to be helping God tell someone that they've been naughty so God can not hurt them or judge them so they can stop being naughty. And um, yeah, he gets chucked overboard in a very difficult storm. And uh, people say, well, how can he survive three days in a while? And that's where everyone goes, yeah, it's just a sort of mythy type story but I think the whole point of it is he didn't survive. If you read that little section in scripture it looks like he actually got his head caught on the weeds down underneath and he dies. It doesn't say he dies but he dies <clears throat> and so then the whale scoops him up off the bottom of the floor and he's just sitting in the mouth of the whale or somewhere in the whale and then the vomit he gets vomited up three days later. Um, and so the miracle isn't that he survived in a whale, it's that he died, got chucked up by a whale, and then got resurrected by God back from the dead, which is the story that uh, Jesus said. Hmm. Um, you know, I'll be like Jonah, three days in a whale, I'll be three days in the belly of the earth, and uh, yeah, dead, hmm. but then God's going to get me back. All right, so um, next we headed on from Albany, just only a short distance really, to the Stirling Ranges. Yeah, they were beautiful, weren't they? Hey, what a... Oh, I feast. They were. Real, I know. So, how did you feel when you were, when you saw this big rage? I just felt like I was in a counselling session with a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> that good. Ah, oh, it was amazing. So, Lucky Bay. We got lucky. We got lucky. What was it? It was so amazing. The colour. And not only that, we're looking at the bay, the beauty, the sand. What did you see? Oh, we saw a little, uh, a roo with a little baby joey in it. And uh, I was like to Nick, Come on, get the shot, get the shot. And, and uh, <laughs> finally got the shot I wanted with the, the kangaroo and the bay in the background. So I managed just to get that. He wouldn't do what it. He probably hadn't talked to his agent. No, he hadn't. Yeah, he yeah. wouldn't sit still or anything. Yeah. Now I did notice out in the bay there, there was a couple of boats and they were sort of marine mm. uh, patrol boats mm. and um, I wonder what they were doing out there but mm. as it turns out there'd been um, some great whites sighted fairly recently and I think a year before... Someone died. Yeah, a great white took them. Yeah, so that was a bit sad. They still didn't stop them swimming though. <laughs> we saw the guys on their, yeah. on their wave skis just sort of walking off to the water and I'm thinking, well, glad that boat's out there. Yeah. They're braver than me, honey. Mm. So we also met a, a lovely, uh, chatty indigenous fella on the uh, yeah. on the beach who was uh, serving a beautiful coffee. As you do, you got talking mm. about matters spiritual. Yeah, we'd heard a story there of um, some women who, when they were growing up, were abused by um, ministers of religion. And we got to share how that is certainly not God's heart, not God's intention. We apologised uh, to them mm. in the name of God that these evil and vile things were done. So 
Imagine if it was done in your name. Why am I doing this to you? Because of Betty. Oh, yeah, if it, said, if it said to do that, it was like, uh, no. No. <laughs> no, I didn't yeah. say to if do it. Betty didn't say this was okay. Yeah, if it's evil. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I think it was power. It was a good thing that you got a chance to apologise. Yeah. You just maybe help him with some of the roadblocks to coming back to God. Yeah. Lucky Bay, honey. Mm. Do you believe in luck? Look, I'm not a big fan of luck. Mm. No. So everyone tries to work out why r r seemingly random things line yeah. up and happen and good and bad. And, yeah. Oh, it's luck, you know, yeah. like this, this is a thing. But I mean, when bad things do happen, the beauty is that his will is so much stronger and so much more ultimate and mm. so much more final. And so, yeah, we go through some bad stuff here. We might even pass on. But in the next place, mm. the big reverse, <laughs> the big reverse. So. That's our faith, you know. We can put up with some tough stuff here knowing that God will correct it mm. um, on the other side. All right, so we took a bit of a detour to mm. Kalgoorlie. Yeah. So that was sort of Esperance. We could have gone right mm. and started heading the Nullarbor. We decided to go up to Kalgoorlie and then back down and yeah. lose a day doing that. So that was that was well worth it. Yeah, day's riding. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the Nullarbor, which was... Uh, <laughs> Something I'd really been looking forward to the whole trip. I was being told about the amazing stars and mm. the beauty of the still nights and I had this romantic idea of the camp and the tent and I was gonna get these fantastic sort of star shots which I'd never done before on the fancy camera. Yeah. And uh, how was the climb? <laughs> <laughs> like it was quite rare that it all clouded over and it rained on the Nullarbor just when we were going through. Oh, the weather. Yeah. yeah 40 knot winds, mm. completely grey, mm. spitting rain. Yeah. Well, we've got a bit more of the Nullarbor to conquer in mm. our next episode, but mm. there's something coming up in the ocean. Well, it was, it was a really touching moment for me in the ocean in Bed Bay. See you next episode. Mm.